they came up with their lies. It's a war of deception. It's a war of mass decep deception which has been imposed onto the Muslim countries. And we are the victims. We are, we are failing to build up our own narratives. Despite the fact that the West managed to bring puppets in the Muslim countries, they have not been able to change the very fabric of the Muslim society. The strategy of the West is to invite journalists from the third world countries, from the Muslim countries, train them, give them orientation, the Western orientation, secularize them, so when they would return to their homeland, they would think like them. And they want that Pakistan should recognize uh, uh, Israel so that they can have more spies network, espionage network in Pakistan to actually what they consider to get rid of Pakistan's nuclear weapons. The fear is if there is a pro-Islamic government in Pakistan, the fear is that since most of the people are deeply conservative, they are Islamist, their heart beats with the Palestinians, with the Kashmiris, these weapons can be used by our future rulers who may be pro-Islamist, like, like in Afghanistan and Iran, so it, they are trying to denuclearize Pakistan. Muslims are the victims of the narratives which have been built up over the course of decades by the Western media. And we have seen when it comes to the Muslim countries, uh, Muslims are being portrayed, they are uncivilized, they are terrorists, they are hatching a plan against the West. They want to have some sort of caliphate and they want to force the Western countries to convert to, the, to become a Muslim. I think those kind of narratives have been built up over the period of time, the very purpose of which was to initiate war upon the Muslim countries so, they, so that their resources could be grabbed, so that they can be victimized, and so that the West could possibly secularize these Muslim countries. This has been going on for the, over a century, over a century. And I, despite the fact, despite the fact that the West managed to bring puppets in the Muslim countries. They have not been able to change the very fabric of the Muslim society. And if you want to see the reality of the Western narrative, just let me give you the latest example of the FIFA World Cup. It has been won by the Palestinians. No Muslim was ready to talk to the, uh, to the media networks of the apartheid state of Israel. The reason being is that Muslims love to hate Israel and for a very obvious reason because of its aggression. In Ukraine, when the Russia started a war against, against uh, uh, Ukraine, then the narrative was built up, look, these are the European countries. This is the European country. These are very civilized. These are our people. They are unlike Iraq. They are unlike Af Afghanistan. They, are, they were uncivilized. They killed over a, over a million people in, in, in Afghanistan, in Iraq, over the course of the decades. They are uncivilized. And for what? There was a weapons of mass destruction. Did you found the, find the weapons of the mass destruction? did not apologize even, they came up with the lies. It's a war of deception. It's a war of mass decep deception which has been imposed onto the Muslim countries. And we are the victims. We are, we are failing to build up our own narratives. Israel every next day lynching people, killing people, but it is still doing this as against the terrorists. All the Palestinian populations are the terrorists. I think we need to have come up with the new ideas, how we can portray the facts. And I, I think I don't want to prolong it, but I just want to give you an example of my own. In December 2019, there was a talk show in Pakistan. It's in English. I said, the day Taliban, the day, the day Americans exit from Afghanistan, Taliban will take over entire Afghanistan within weeks. 
all the opponent groups would join them because they would announce general amnesty. This was the punchline of my assessment. December 2019. Now, July 2021, one month before Joe Biden, uh, uh, they, he made a prediction. He's saying the Afghan National Army is, the number of the Afghan National Army is 300,000 well equipped with American weapons. They are going nowhere against 75,000 Taliban. And you have seen on August 15, Taliban took over entire Afghanistan. On May 1st, Taliban, uh, the Americans started leaving and they left. And when Taliban took over Kabul, uh, within weeks, and then American sent the army back to pull out its staff. That shows how terrible Americans are. They don't understand the region, but they built up a narrative over the course of two decades that the uh, that uh, Americans were winning the war against the Taliban. I think first we need to see the, the human tools of the West to build up the narratives. The strategy of the West is to invite journalists from the third world countries, from the Muslim countries, train them, give them orientation, the Western orientation, secularize them, so when they would return to their homeland, they would think like them. They, the Muslim journalist or the journalist of the third world countries, they would see their own countries from the Western angle. I think the, these are the biggest tools of the West and already they have set, they have imposed the puppet rulers. So I think with that they have managed to build up a very negative stereotypes about the Muslim countries and countries where resistance against the West is there, they are being projected there, they are the hardliners. And then you see, until unless you think in your own language, until unless you indigenize yourself, you cannot change the, change the Western narrative. We have to admit the facts that they have huge resources and the biggest resources that they have are the human resources. The journalist, again I have to say this, to, to stress it, we have to change the orientation of the journalist. We have to bring a new generation we need to prepare them, who, the people who love their own countries, the journalists who love their own values. I think until unless we train them, we prepare them, we cannot counter those narratives. Let me give you an example. The former Prime Minister Imran Khan, when he was Prime Minister, he disclosed that there is a US regime change operation in Pakistan going to take place. Mm. And he waved a letter, a letter which was written by Pakistan's ambassador to Washington, to the army chief. I mean, he did not use the word army chief, but we know he wrote the army chief. That letter contained threats to the army chief. If you don't remove Prime Minister Imran Khan's government, you will face consequences. Now, interestingly, how media portrayed it? Westernized Pakistan media portrays this is a bogus letter. And then the Prime Minister called a National Security Committee meeting, Army Chief, all other services chief ministers were there. And they produced a letter. And then they said, it is interference into Pakistan's affairs. And we will issue a demarche to the US ambassador. He would be summoned. And then his government was changed. New Prime Minister came in. The, who were pro-US and they, they said that what previous meeting decided that was correct it was in interference in, into our affairs nonetheless media portrayed it you know it is a just interference in our uh, in our affairs the fact of that and the Prime Minister the then Prime Minister Imran Khan was saying it is a conspiracy it is it is an attack on Pakistan but now we have to understand Conspiracy is the first stage. Interference is the second stage. Interference is, a, is mean an act of aggression. 
there was a proof of a documentary proof but the media was portraying a narrative no it is a just interference and their interference means i just i mean they have spoken some words against pakistan which is a complete nonsense and till now the pro us politicians in pakistan they have been projecting that it was a fake narrative that prime minister built up but luckily the people of pakistan accepted that narrative according to a survey 72% pakistanis considered the us as their enemies they know americans were responsible for spillover effects of a retaliatory war imposed on pakistan 80000 people were killed but still pakistan's westernized media projecting it oh it was a fake narrative by imran khan there was americans were not involved and one close friend of mine a journalist arsh sharif he was assassinated in kenya because he was projecting imran khan's narrative it was a conspiracy he was exposing some of the military journals i would say let me name him the former military the outgoing military chief the former military chief general kamar javed bajwa he actually handled that operation behind the scene and the reason why i mean this let me give you the political situation pakistan has been american alive for last seven decades the day prime minister imran khan visited russia russia coincidentally started a war uh, against ukraine american perceived it pakistan is going in russia and china's leg block and they conspired for the, for the first time in the history of pakistan a politician a took on powerful military and establish one narrative in pakistan despite the fact that media was against him that there were some traitors within the military within the politicians it was a force of the uh, his operation through social media and because of his personality charisma and he you see the point that he's trying to make that pakistan is no longer slave to the american we need to come out of mental slavery of the americans he is the most likely to win the elections despite the fact that previously the military and all the politicians all the political parties have turned against him this means the social fabric of pakistan is still and is intact it is anti us they know the us is their enemy i foresee uh, that if not imran khan imran khan could possibly be disqualified uh, through, through manipulations but his party is most likely to win and now they it seems his opponents have lost the options and that is why there was an assassination attempt on him because if he returns to power the fears are in the middle east what imran khan would do he try to have an alternative block to the oic because oic is just rubber stamp of the of the west he, there was a conference in malaysia and iran qatar malaysia they were they were there imran khan was stopped at the 11th hour by the saudis if you go there we will we will stop you aid financial aid to you and we will expel 4 million pa- pa- pakistanis this means that nobody wants imran khan to be in power and more importantly israel doesn't want imran khan into power just one and a half year ago about two dozen journalists were invited by the military chief in for, for the informal discussion and he said i'm talking about the former military chief general Uh, Kamar Javed Bajwa he said we want to recognize israel but the then prime minister was not listening to them he said i have set up your meeting with the prime minister go and convince him it is in our interest journalists were sent to him journalists tried to convince him but imran khan said no it would never happen i, I think in a broader picture if we come to the 
solutions. What are the solutions? I think we need to build up a counter narrative in South Asia and the Middle East. I would say the Western Asia, West Asia is a very much linked with the events happening in the South Asia. I'm talking specifically about Afghanistan, Pakistan, uh, India. Re Israel has an alliance with India. Uh, Kashmir's demographics were changed just on a pattern of what is happening in occupied Palestine. Israel was against a hardline government in, in Afghanistan because there were prophecies that the resistance would come from Khurasan. Khurasan a Bazurg. When Khurasan a Bazurg means parts of Pakistan, parts of Afghanistan, parts of Iran. So the resistance would come from this region. The focus of the Israel, which operates behind the scene, is to change the mindset of the people. First they impose war in, in Afghanistan. Uh, a giant that and there was, as, a, as a matter of fact, it was imposed on Pakistan. The target was Pakistan's nuclear weapons. Because Israel destroyed Iraq's nuclear program in, in, in early 80s. They don't, they've, been, they've been assassinating Iran's uh, uh, nuclear scientists and they want that Pakistan should recognize uh, uh, Israel so that they can have more spies network, espionage network in Pakistan to actually what they consider to get rid of Pakistan's nuclear weapons. The fear is if there is a pro-Islamic government in Pakistan, the fear is that since most of the people are deeply conservative, they are Islamist, their heart beats with the Palestinians, with the Kashmiris, these weapons can be used by a future rulers who may be pro-Islamist, like, like in Afghanistan and Iran. So it, they are trying to denuclearize Pakistan and the war was imposed in Afghanistan. One of the reasons was this particular reason that they don't want Pakistan to be, a, a, uh, to be uh, from the defense, defense point of view, powerful to have a nuclear weapons. Now I would like to ask me, Mr. Rana to tell us his conclusive remarks about the war of narratives. I think on war of narratives, we need to train our own journalists with, with, with the, who are indigenous, who believe in, in, in Muslim values. And then we need to tell untold story of about the disgraceful exit of the Americans from Afghanistan. Nobody is telling that story. We need to tell another story on Israel. In 1967, the total Muslims were 100% populated in East Jerusalem. Now, 63% are the Jews, Zionists there, settlers are there. And UA government, through hand-picked businessmen, they are buying properties on the behalf of those Zionists. The growing tide of anti-Israel sentiments. What you see behind me is just tip of the iceberg of what is happening in the country. More than half of $52 billion black CIA budget is spent on espionage network in Pakistan. How would you handle it? The US uh, has looked upon Pakistan as an ally at one point and then uh, as an enemy at the same time. That is going to be the first legalism on the basis of which he is going to be instantly ousted by the Supreme Court of Pakistan. Joining us live, uh, Javed Rana, who's an expert on politics and geostrategic issues. In the world politics, which is not being driven by any moral principle, it is being driven by the hard geostrategic realities. In a broader picture, more countries would aspire to have nuclear weapons.